All right, so first thing, attach the clamps to the frame. So got one here, one there. Got some paper underneath to protect the tabletop before we start clamping that down. Now we're using the wood clamp with a block underneath, a block up top. Yeah. Thank you kindly. And just clamp that down. And then I do the same thing on the other side. So now I got it clamped down. Let me just test the hinge. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> and that's why you test it. So now I got everything clamped down. Then, yep, lift the screen up so it's hinged. All right. So there's a piece of polycarbonate plastic put it underneath that protects the tabletop, but it also is completely flat because if you have any imperfections in the surface that you're screening onto, it'll affect the way it prints. So you want to have something underneath this totally flat. So we've got polycarbonate it's taped down the blue tape. That way it doesn't shift when you're printing. Blue tape, easy to remove off the table. Now we've taped off inside the frame. So you don't have any ink come out of any part of the screen except for the images. So right now we're trying to figure out where the edge of the printed image is going to be. And that'll help us set up the paper so that it prints exactly where we want to print on the paper. So you can see how that was done. tape that's being laid down right now where the corner of the paper will be lined up and we've done another one over there if you line two uh, uh, corners you're good just like that so real important detail make sure you cover up your shoes because you will get ink on them wear clothes that it's all right to get ink on them you're going to get ink on every part of you whether you intend to or not make space to lay out the prints for them to dry so you can use your floors make sure you you know swept it vacuumed whatever so you're not getting a bunch of dust upon it so here's one of three or four places in the house where we'll set up the prints to dry make sure to lay out uh, all the paper ahead of time uh, that way you're not scrambling to find it and so keep all your clean paper on one side and then all your dirty stuff on the other side so ink over here paper over here and as you print you just take each print and you go lay it out to dry so make sure you've got something like you know ink jar that you can use in between prints so as you're printing you could pull the paper out easily Get the next piece of paper set up in there and not let the screen go all the way back down onto the surface all right so you want to lay the ink out just using a spoon and the goal is to put like an even stripe of ink where the squeegee is going to pick up and it usually takes you know a couple of prints to get it all going real smooth but this is how you get the whole thing started. Okay, so you line up the first piece of paper and it just lines up in the corners where we had laid out the blue tape. All right, so next you're gonna flood the screen. Um, so basically what you do is try to get the squeegee down in there and drag it up. Okay, and now the screen should be pretty much ready to go. Again, it usually takes two or three to get everything rolling real smooth. Well. All right, so now we're gonna print. So all I'm doing is just applying even pressure, both hands and pulling straight back. There we go. All right, so putting out a little bit more ink. It's better to go a little bit light and then just add ink versus putting out way too much, which is what we did last time. Um, 
can always add more, but it's much harder to get them back into the jar. Okay, so then you're just gonna repeat the process of flooding the screen. Not a great job there. There we go. And then you just pull the print. So now we've been scraping up all the ink that we can get. If you just get like a piece of, like you get any of these magazines that come in the mail, like catalogs for clothing companies, whatever, use pieces of that. You can come in and scrape up. You can get quite a lot of it back. And so definitely see how much you can get before you peel the tape off and then go wash the thing out. So the squeegee itself is going to hold also a surprising amount of ink. So if you just hold the card right over the ink jar and then pull the squeegee towards you, if you're lucky, it'll go right in. And you do it on all three edges. And that's going right into the paper. All right, so now I'm going to go wash the screen out. We're actually going to do it outside with the hose because it's, you know, to clean up anything indoors. Uh, in this cup, I've got a mixture of just dish soap, like Dawn, uh, and some water and a sponge. And that you just give it a once over in between spraying. Yeah. All right, so just spraying now with the, got a little nozzle here that gets a little bit more pressure on the hose. Got sponge with soapy water. And wipe the edges of it with the rails. And you might have to do a couple of passes with the sponge. But the ink doesn't put up much fight. So here's one of the first runs, test runs, just to see how well this design would print. Uh, looks really good. And you can see this 355 mesh screen that we're using holds a really impressive amount of detail. So yeah, next we'll work on an airbrush stencil. So this squeegee right here is an 80 durometer, I think that's how you pronounce that, uh, urethane. And that refers to the flexibility in the blade. So the higher the number, the less flexible it is, the more stiff the urethane is. And typically if you're using a screen that's got a higher mesh count, in this case we're using 355, which is about as high as you can go, then you wanna use a stiff um, squeegee a stiff squeegee plus high mesh count will give you really, really good uh, detail. Um, for something where you're using a lighter color, like say we're doing this with white, you'd probably do it with a lower mesh count on the screen and then use a softer, uh, lower like a 60 durometer or something like that, um, squeegee blade so that you can squish more ink through more rapidly. <laughs> 